the movies, uh, the were werewolf has to wear pants in the movies made in the 40s to help show, to hide his wolf door. Um, but this movie was made in the 80s, so why was there no wolf door? <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because he does, he comes back to, to the pieces uh, come back together and he's got his pants back on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone else ever thought of that, but I was noticing at this time that he was wearing pants. So. Well, let's see if Benicio Del Toro shows his. <laughs> I wish I had more exciting questions. <laughs> those are fans, those are fans. Um, so, you, so we're also showing uh, Night of the Creeps tonight. Volley to be there. How many people are here to see the Monster Squad? And how many are here to see Night of the Creeps? Yeah! Here's the Night of the Creep story. We <laughs> couldn't go out on a limo to the theaters in LA to see it play because it did not play it. Yeah. I actually went to Times Square and got to see the, you know, the real shit kicking and went, you know, late night. Whoa, don't go in that door! <laughs> I, I think this, that's what this is going to be. <laughs> see, uh, the resurrection of this movie started about two years ago at the Alamo Draft House, which this is a very yeah. similar crowd. You guys are awesome. The difference of the Alamo is you can drink beer. <laughs> I have, so, uh, can you talk a little bit about Night of the Creeps? It's such a, it's such a great movie, and it's again, I think you're just ahead of your time because I think that that movie just is so great, and it really holds up today, and it's just super awesome. I appreciate that. I. I have some problems with it. There's stuff in it that I really, you know, I win some, when I look at it. And there's other stuff that's so sort of whacked out. I'm like, I can't believe I did that. Because <laughs> uh, nobody was telling me what to do. I was like, wow, I'm a director. Here I go. And, you know, this you know, 60 year old grips like, what? I'm going to put Atkins on a dolly and spin him around the room. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's moments that, uh, but then there's other stuff like this. So thank you for your. Uh, well, I'm, I'm having a hard time asking you this, but I'm very starstruck, I'm very excited. Please, so. uh, please. Uh, the movie was A Trial by Fire. It was my first picture, and uh, what they don't tell you in film school, I didn't go to film school because they rejected me. Well, they don't tell you. It's true. USC, Israel, I didn't want me. But what they don't tell you is that being a director is, is also being kind of like a military leader. And you have to marshal your troops. And it isn't just kind of, ooh, this is going to be symbolic. Like socialism. Like <laughs> <laughs> green, and that's going to be symbolic. You, know, that's, you, know, you actually have a day job where you have to tell hundreds of people what to do. And so that was that can get a little bit uh, intimidating. But I'm over for it. So uh, another question I have is uh, so. Obviously, you did a, a great homage in Night of the Creeps where you had all the characters' last names be Cronenberg and Hoover and Carpenter and um, all of your, I assume, I assume, favorite horror directors. Well, actually, they were uh, fans of all of them, but it was specifically directors who had started the first films as horror films. Like Jim Cameron, who the detective was named after, uh, who Tommy Atkins plays, uh, but named after Jim Cameron, whose first movie was Pearl Rock 2. <laughs> You had to avoid you had to make your first films. Well, then I have a question about that because uh, my favorite horror director is Wes Craven, and his first movie was Last House on the Left, which is a horror movie. Uh, so, so why isn't he in there? Yeah, why did Craven left? Um, I believe that Brad's last name is Craven. Oh, really? Yeah, we may not actually hear it in the movie, but that's yeah. See? All right. I'm 